<laughs> What's up? How are you, Taylor? I'm doing all right. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You know, we're sitting here killing time waiting for you to come in. And one of the uh, folks listening had a uh, question. They're like, ask Tay this. I'm like, I've never met Taylor before. I don't think I can call her Tay just yet. We're not on that level. <laughs> Maybe we're, no, we're done with this. No one calls me Tay except for my, my sister from when she was younger because she couldn't say the L's yet. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm very happy that I did not do that then. How are you? Welcome. I get T a lot. You can call me T. You get T a lot? I can call you T? All right. It's funny you say that because I have a very good friend here who also is a, uh, a business owner in, in Northeast PA and his nickname is T. So now I know two T's. Two T's. What's, uh, what's going on? Welcome to Wilkesbury here, 97.9X in Northeast PA. How's things for you? Where are you at? Uh, I'm in Maine right now. Um, lockdown, quarantine, you know. Yeah, kinda, just like the rest of us, kind of chilling out and, you know, exactly. uh, trying to figure what we're going to do to occupy ourselves for uh, however long it is we're locked down and stuff. We were supposed to do this chat yesterday, but obviously the, the music industry had a big deal yesterday, you know, pressing pause to acknowledge uh, some of the just the craziness going on in our country it's, right now, right? I don't even know what to say. It's so insane. It's so crazy. I mean... This country has a disease and it obviously it needs a cure and it needs a cure fast. I mean, the fact that this is still going on and to such extremes is it's heartbreaking. And I mean, I don't I, I don't have the answer. I'm just trying to listen and learn and educate myself. And, you know, and then that leads to action. So I just I don't know. I, all I'm trying to do is just I speak through music. I'm a terrible I'm a terrible public speaker, even about music. So, you know, I've kind of trained myself in. And writing songs is how I express myself. So I, I try to to keep it limit it to music uh, as far as you know speaking on issues like this go. But it's 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 devastating what's going on right now. You know, is what is it like in Maine right now, Taylor? Because I know here in Wilkesbury there was actually um, businesses right around six o'clock in the uh, Greater Wilkesbury area shut down because there was a a Facebook I want to I guess say rumor that there was going to be a protest. Some people were going to start rioting and looting, and nothing ended up happening. But it was amazing how quickly um, businesses here closed early, shut their doors. The National Guard was activated. What's it like in Maine right now? Um. Well, I'm pretty isolated in Maine. I'm on an island, so I'm really, okay. Well, okay. I'm really out of out out of uh, the public right now, um, so I'm I'm not entirely sure. I haven't been into the city at all, but uh, you know, people people are upset, and they have a right to be. So you have a uh, a new song out. We're playing it, "Death by Rock and Roll." Uh, you have a new album coming, and there are some pretty big names on this album. I was surprised, uh, you know, to see uh, some of them, and one of which you were gonna go, you had been on tour with uh, Soundgarden. Um, mm -hmm. So Kim and Matt from Soundgarden are on the album. Tom Morello from Rage is on the <laughs> album. How cool is that? How did that all come about? Uh, it's first of all, it's wicked cool. Um, I mean, yeah, it Matt, is. Matt, I mean, uh, they're all kind of, they're all friends. That's kind of how it came about. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, we had the only let them save me now came about, and that we I had this song, and I, I called up Matt and Kim, and I was like, guys, the song is begging for you guys on this. It's begging for you to play on this. Are, you know, are you in? They said yes. We went to we flew to Seattle. We recorded at London Bridge Studios, which was great. It was uh, you know they did. It's where the Pearl Jam's 10 was recorded and mm -hmm. Soundgarden's Louder Than Love. And so just to be in such an iconic space with such iconic musicians making something new was so, so incredible. Um, so I'm really excited for people to hear that. And then and Tom Morello came about kind of the same way as I had this song called And So It Went and called him up and said, hey, dude, I'm sending you the song. Is this something you'd be interested in playing on? Because it's, it's begging for your voice. Like he has such, you know, in my book, he's one of the best guitar players of all time. He has such a mm -hmm. unique sound and, and voice with his instrument that, that is so undeniably him. And I was like, can you, are you into this? And, and he said, yeah. And, huh. really, and I don't want to talk too much about it because no one's heard it, but he comes in. Right, of course. And I'll, I'll just tell you, none of, none of them disappoint. It's, it's pretty incredible. <laughs> I mean, we're talking some pretty, uh, pretty big name musicians here. So I can't imagine, uh, and of course, y yourselves included, but I can't imagine that that would disappoint. In fact, if anything, it has to surpass everybody's expectations. And, and it's funny because right now I'm trying to picture what Tom Morello's guitar would sound like on a pretty reckless song, you know? Well, this record, it's, uh, it takes, a, it's, it's a journey, this record. It, uh, it's got, it's, there's a lot of departures, but at the same time, very, um, very us. It's, I don't know. And in, in a lot of ways, this record feels like our first record um, in the sense that we really put everything we had into it uh, from emotionally, physically, mentally, the, the whole shebang. 
Um, and so it's, I'm really excited for people to hear it. Cause I, in my opinion, it's our, it's our best record we've ever made. You know, it's funny when I heard uh, death by rock and roll for the first time, it was in my office and uh, my friend Tyson played it for me. And I'm like, who's actually on the call right now. Um, and I'm like, wow, that was, that's really good. It's, it's a big stadium rocker in my view. I mean, it's one of those songs that gets people chanting, right? It was well. I don't know because we can't tour right now. No, right, because you can't tour. You haven't toured yet behind it, so hopefully soon we'll so figure hopefully. that out. But that's what it feels like to me. That was. The, I mean, that was kind of the intention. It was, you know, death by rock and roll is kind of. It's our battle cry for rock and roll. Of yeah. Uh, live life your own way. Go out your own way. Freedom. Don't let anyone tell you differently. And and really kind of just honing in on that and and creating an anthem of 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 rock and roll uh, of you know, if, if I'm going to go out, I want to go out on my terms. And to me, that's rock and roll. Are you, uh, are you still writing songs while you're at home and kind of locked down right now? Cause I mean, we don't really have a whole lot else we can do. Um, yes. I mean, I'm always writing. So y yes and no, I'm actually kind of trying to withhold from, from writing. Cause if I go down that tunnel, that's such a brain right. switch, then, then it's, a, you know, right now I'm kind of in promotion mode and, and okay. trying to figure out how to do all this via Skype and Instagram live and everything and trying to figure out the new kind of the, the new paradigm we're in right now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm always, really, I've just been mostly, I've been playing a ton of guitar. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. That's um, awesome. Trying to, trying to stay away from the writing bug as much as possible. Cause that really is a, once I delve into that, that's all I'll care about. So <laughs> trying to just, just so it really is on pause. It's almost like a, it sounds like it's almost Taylor like a, a switch you have to flip so that when you're done with the music for the album, you're like, okay, I have to shut this part down now so that we can get it recorded, we can get it perfected, we can get it road ready, and then go and play the songs live before you're ready to sit down and think about writing more. Yeah, I mean, not the recording part of it. The recording part of it, that's, you know, the creation of the song from, from inception to, to finish. That's all one one thing but once you once it's public once you're releasing stuff and you're in a in a public forum and then it, it's certainly a little bit of a switch in my brain of like his writing and creating music is so internal um mm -hmm. for me it's so inside that to then go out into the world it's you know you gotta put a put a different hat on basically have you uh, have you ever had a song that you've written taylor that when you uh present it to your bandmates or maybe other musicians like the guys in soundgarden or tom morello and you're thinking about that and you're going man maybe this is a this song is a little too personal for me as far like lyrics content that kind of thing that you're not sure about sharing it does that ever happen um yes and no there's definitely moments uh there's definitely times and moments on this record where if I take a second to actually think about it, it's where that's so, you know, I'm so vulnerable or I'm so exposed uh, that it can be a little scary to share, but I, I, but I'm my harshest critic. So I really kind of put everything through the, the ringer in my own head before, <laughs> before right. I share. So by the time I'm, I'm at a place where I feel com confident to share it at all, uh, I've kind of already done it. I've, I've, you know, dissed on it as much as humanly possible. So <laughs> I, kind of, I put it through the test. So. By the time so, it gets to that point, I'm, I'm, I'm confident. We have a, uh, a listener, a, a fan watching from Wilkesbury. His name is Ken. He wanted to ask a question earlier. Uh, do you have any songs, a dream song that you would love to cover? I don't know how you feel about cover songs these days, but is there one that you feel connected to and passionate about that you'd actually cover on your own? I mean, there's the, covers are hard because yeah. in one way, I mean, Playing songs is just fun. So that's what I've been doing at home is just playing lots of other people's songs. Like I've been playing a ton of Oasis recently. Really? Just for fun. Yeah. Just Wonderwall? Fun. By any chance? Wonderwall. All of them. Just go down the roster. And yeah, yeah. All of them for fun. Um, but covers are tricky because if, you're, if they're not simply just for fun, like in the very beginning of our touring career, we played a lot of covers because we only had one sure. record. So we right. had to kind of fill so up. you have to fill out the time. We had to fill out the time. Now covers, they have to come about, in my opinion, they have to have a purpose. They have to have a meaning behind. They have to have a reason. If yeah. that makes sense. Like, because otherwise, you know, I'm not, we're not in a cover band. So it's, it, right. it, it has, you know, like I recently just did, uh, I just did two covers, actually. We just, I just did Peace, Love and Understanding by Nick Lowe um, to raise, to help raise funds for Crew Nation which seemed like a song that was very fitting for the times and an amazing song. One of my favorite, like, love that song. And we recently, uh, Matt and I just did a cover of halfway there, uh, mm -hmm. for, for Chris Cornell, for a tribute to Chris Cornell. So 
there has to kind of be there has to be a reason in my opinion um and then it's yeah. about finding the right song that that fits with with what you're trying to say and communicate you know and i think that the trouble with covers too is you know it's kind of a double-edged sword because if you do the song too close to the original you get flack for that or if you do the mm -hmm. song way too outside of the original you get flack for that so it's almost like it's a no-win situation. Even if yeah. you find a song that you connect with personally, if you put out a version that you're like, is so different or, you know, just so much a Taylor version, it may not sit with, you know, fans of the song originally, you know? Yeah, I think, I think the goal with covers in general is you just try to find, you cover the songs that are the best songs possible. Like songs that are just undeniably great, no matter how they're played, no matter how they're performed, you know, songs that really just are undeniably great that's that's the right word where it's just there's nothing to say about that other than that's a great song whether you like my right. or not that's up to you but that's a great song so you know obviously touring's not happening right now pretty much for anybody i think the last band that i saw recently was at monday the stadium tour called it uh called it for now is postponed um when we finally do get a chance to go back out and play again, what do you think that's going to look like? Are you hearing anything? Are you thinking anything? Do you have any prerequisites for yourself as far as how you would feel say, uh, safe going out and touring? I mean, right now. It's a tough I, question, right? Yeah, it is a really tough question. I mean, right now, if you said go on tour tomorrow, I wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. I wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. My fans in that situation, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable. I haven't left my house. Like I'm, I'm freaked out. <laughs> well, and, and as well, I would expect. And you know, it's funny as a fan, somebody who goes to see shows myself. I don't think I'd want to be around seventeen thousand other people right now, whether they no. said it was safe or not. As much as I like, you know, the pretty reckless or whoever, with sixteen thousand nine hundred ninety-nine other people next to me, I'm not sure yeah. that's such a brilliant idea. No, and it's it's scary right now. Um, you know, I'm trying to look at live shows and. You know, it's obviously it's a it's a real bummer to not be able to play right now, especially releasing new music and mm -hmm. you know playing those songs live that really completes the circle. And so not being able to do that sucks, for lack of a better word. Sure, sure. But uh, but it's just you know it's it's crazy right now, and and safety comes first, and and it like anything else, and you know it's it's a storm, and storms you know whether it's a long storm, a bad storm, short storm, a squall, whatever, they they eventually pass, and so it's really, right now it's just everyone's got to just pause and you know live music will come back i'm not exactly sure what that's going to look like but we're musicians i didn't get in the band to not play so right. we'll figure out a way to play live you know it's, it's the fun part so and and people and i think that live music is so needed you know it feeds the soul so we'll figure it out i don't i don't know when exactly i don't know exactly how but i i know that rock and roll will live on and we'll figure out a way to play in fact, it's it's funny because there's a question here from Luke of 5K is asking, what about live performances through, say, Instagram or Facebook, those kind of things? Uh, what are your thoughts on doing those? I mean, you're you're by yourself, you said, so you'd have to get your bandmates together virtually. Yeah. I can only imagine just how hard that might be to do pull off live. It's that and it's so not the same. Like, it's not. It's, it's not really the, not. It's not the same. So, I mean, we've had to do I've had to do a, a little bit of that from home, but, you know, I'm kind of. I'm just looking forward to the day that the four of us can get in a room together, you know, and yeah. once, once the four of us can be in a room together, you know, then whether that's a live stream of us playing like, you know, or very small crowds or however it, I've heard talk about, you know, driving movie theater shows or something like that. Yeah. So who did that? Keith Urban did that. I think somebody yeah, did that. A country I, guy may have done one. I know they're like, they're trying to test it out and see. Yeah. Know, see the logistics. Everyone, can it work? Yeah. So I, you know, everyone's gonna, we'll figure it out. We'll say, you know, for lack of a better phrase, we'll figure sure, it out. Sure, <laughs> sure. What's, uh, what's your guitar collection look like? As someone who plays a little bit myself, I'm always interested in what, a, you know, an artist has guitar-wise. I have probably too many guitars. <laughs> you can never have too many guitars, not, Taylor. Not enough. <laughs> I mean, not enough. Um, I mean, I have... Uh, what do you want me to like list them out? It's well, no, I mean, do you have a favorite? Do you have a one, like, what's your go-to? Like the one you always pick up invariably. You're like, I'm going to sit down and play right now. Which one do you grab? Because I'm, I'm guessing you at least have 10 in your house right now. I do. I mean, uh, I've been playing a lot of acoustic guitar right now just because yeah. I'm at home. Um, but, uh, so you don't have the big stack in the rig in the house? I don't have the big stack <laughs> in the rig in the house. It was all at the rehearsal space. Right. We were getting rehearsal ready for tour. So all my gear, all our gear is there. And that is under lockdown and quarantine. And we haven't been sure. getting it out. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I've got a, I've got a beautiful Rickenbacker that I love. I've got the Punisher, which if you're a fan, you'll know that the neck through telly with the big Punisher yep. sticker on it. 
Um, got a, uh, beautiful 70s Strat that I love. Got, uh, the pink Paisley Telly, um, I, I don't know the list. The list do you have on. a hard time? Not. Uh, not do you ever hard time pressing pause on buying guitars? Do you ever just you know like uh, surf the net one night and you're like, wow, that guitar is pretty badass. I have to have it. Click buy, and then you're like, man, why did I do that? Uh, I'm. Pretty or do you, have you gotten rid of guitars that you wish you didn't? I'm pretty good with the with not buying immediately. I'm pretty good at trying to like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna look at it for a week every day. Right. And if I still think I need it by the end of the week, then that's something right. I'll, I'll think about. Okay. I'm pretty good at not impulse buying, especially online. If if I'm in an actual store, impulse buying that's a little harder. Yeah. <laughs> to say no to. If you're you know <laughs> given you city, know, when you actually pick it up and feel it, then you fall in love. It's you know it's it's a little different than the the digital picture. Yeah. It's funny yeah. you say that because we did a we did a an acoustic thing with the guys in the glorious sons uh over the summer and we did it at a music store and they picked up they played guitars from the wall they literally just picked up and the and guy ended up going back and it was like a two thousand dollar martin or something like that he of went course. back and bought it because he just loved it that much I'm like I wow mean, that never happens that's what happens i mean guitars are kind of i mean i know everyone in our band says guitars are like women you fall in love and then you have to mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta take getting it that special one <laughs> Exactly. That's pretty funny. Do you have uh, Do you have any indication about when the new album is going to be out? I mean, it's kind of crazy right now with the uh, the pandemic. So it it is certainly crazy. Uh, we don't have an exact release date, um, but the record is finished. I can tell you that. Um, mm -hmm. There's going to be "Death by Rock and Roll." It's just it's just the first single. It's just the first taste. There's going to be lots more songs coming. Um, so we're not disappearing again. Pretty reckless of back. <laughs> yeah, and I'll tell you what, you've certainly you've certainly made a statement with the first single because it's it's pretty awesome. I love hearing it on the radio. I actually heard it in my car. I forget where I was driving to, and I'm like cranked it up because I'm like, this is really badass. Let's be Thanks. honest. <laughs> yeah, I, and I wouldn't say that. Just you know, I would tell you that straight up if I liked it or I didn't. And it's a great song. Well, I, I thank you. I appreciate that. If you didn't like it, I would hope you'd tell me. Yeah, I mean, well, I wouldn't tell you on this forum, but I would tell you <laughs> privately. <laughs> but yeah, exactly. No, I do. I really dig it. And I, I, you know, it feels like just it just feels like a hit, you know? Oh, well, geez, thank you. It's uh, it's been pretty overwhelming seeing the response um, sitting at home kind of going. Yeah, this is, I guess this is doing really well. This is crazy. So just huh. thank you. Thank you for the support and, and the love. Like it's uh, it's it's very overwhelming. Hey, I've got a, I just saw a quick question I thought here was interesting from Aileen. She asked if you would ever consider doing a hair and makeup tutorial, which, I mean, for me, that's not going to help me at all. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that's kind of interesting. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think I'm not good at, like, FaceTime or selfies. I, I, I haven't figured it out. I, I know that sounds stupid, but it's true. No, um, it doesn't. It really doesn't. So I'll be honest with you. I, I am, as you can tell by the horrible orange light, because I'm doing this from my dining room table right now. I haven't figured that stuff out either yet. I mean, you look I'm, great, you know. Well, thank you. I'm, I've got like as much light, like put all the lamps in front of me to try to blast <laughs> it out. Um, but I can't. So the kind of trying to, I've seen some tutorials, but trying yeah. to do makeup in your camera phone and stuff, I just, I don't think I'd be very good at it. I don't think I'd, I don't think I'd give you many good tips. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would kind of be more of like a what not to do tutorial. <laughs> there you go. There you go. So, and how are you handling, because uh, you said you're home in Maine by yourself. How are you handling the whole just regular routine maintenance, like getting your hair done and all that kind of stuff? Are you just not doing that right now? Doing yeah. it yourself with a, out of a box? Yeah, I'm just not doing anything. I'm sweatpants. You can't see me. Sweatpants, black tank top. When I got to, you know, do promotion or whatever i yeah. put on some makeup which is a struggle but uh <laughs> <laughs> but that's pretty much it i mean uh no i'm just um i'm casual it's kind of i've been in kind of my own personal quarantine by choice for like the past sure. years so i'm kind of used to this routine right of, of kind of self-isolation um so it's not that strange for me but it uh it did come at, at a time that i was very much looking forward to getting out of of isolation and now it's just a little bit it's a little bit more prolonged i'm running out of netflix though <laughs> oh yeah what are you watching on netflix these days anything good well, i just finished ozark which i loved i have ne yet to see an episode of that but i hear it is really amazing uh, i know i might be the last person on the earth that hasn't watched it it's i think it's freaking i i think it's awesome i love jason bateman I, i've yeah, always so does him. my wife she loves but him the, but it really kind of put it over the top was was ozark uh 
So yeah, I got to check that one out. And now I'm just kind of resorting back to like shows that just feel like comfort shows. So like South Park and Friends and a lot of comedy just to try to keep keep spirits high. You know, it's funny because you say Friends. I have a 17 year old daughter and who was not around at all for the you know the first run of it, and she literally <laughs> just streamed the entire. 10 seasons i'm like really i don't get that you're 17 i don't see but i mean a good show is a good show right it's i can watch seinfeld friends curb your enthusiasm i can all those shows i can watch just endlessly on repeat i think they're yeah. so great just like light, uh, just lighthearted. <laughs> well two really quick questions and i'll get you out of here on these because uh i know you have another interview coming up um a strange question. Does the, do you think the Pretty Reckless will ever tour with Iron Maiden? It seems like an interesting fit. <laughs> well, I believe, if I have my facts right, we were actually supposed to play with them this summer. Oh, no um, kidding. That's at cool. some of the festivals in Europe, yeah. Right. So, okay, well, that uh, would make sense then. Yeah, which would have been really cool. Um, so, I don't, I don't know. I'm in. I'm down. Anything's possible, right? Anything's possible. Uh, I never know. And the other one was, uh, what's up with high T? And I've seen that question a million times go through the scroll here. So I have to, I feel like I have to ask you that. Um, something I'm working on and trying to figure out. I don't want to okay. get too much away because I, I haven't quite figured it out, but it's, All right. it's something up here. That's interesting. Would you collaborate with Gaga? I, I mean, is that, I mean, who, if you had an opportunity to collaborate with someone, I have to imagine whether it's Lady Gaga or someone else, even if it's not in the rock space, you'd consider doing that, right? It depends. It's and it doesn't even really depend. You know, everyone says like, "What artists would you want to collaborate with?" That's not. It's not how I think about it. It's it's collaborations to me can get very redundant very fast because it's. Yeah. It, I feel like especially in the modern kind of paradigm, it's been very. What's the right word? Uh, used as like a marketing tool or something. Sure. It's, a little played me, out, to be fair. A little right? played out, and to yeah. me, collaborations have to come about really organically. Like when I look at. Anytime we've worked with any other artist, I go, is this going to better the song? Is this, is this asking for the, does this need this other person to make this better? And if the answer is yes, then that's something you pursue. Um, so it's, it really depends on the situation. It depends on the song. It depends on right. the, you know, how it came about and it, it, they can't be forced. They have to be, kind of, they have to be organic. Otherwise to me, there's kind of, yeah, it's, it's not my thing. Sure. Well, I know that you uh, have a lot going on today. So I just want to take a second and say thank you for uh, spending some time with us here in uh, Northeast PA 97.9X. And I, I hope that you get a chance to tour here soon, you know, in the Wilkes-Barre area. That'd be great. We've got a great outdoor venue here that holds 17,000 people. So, you know, maybe we'll get a chance to see you at some point. Uh, congrats on the new record. Can't wait to hear the rest of it. Really digging Death by Rock and Roll. And, you know, really appreciate you taking a couple of minutes from your living room to my dining room here exactly. and chatting with like, us today. What else do you have to do? <laughs> I, literally, you know what? Nothing. I've really got nothing else going on, but I'm excited that I finally had a chance to talk to you uh, and, you know, and tell you how great the song is. Thanks so much. We, we do appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate the support, man. I, I really appreciate the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Absolutely. We'll see you again soon. Thanks so much, Dave. All right. Dave. You too. To you. Take care. Bye-bye.